Hello everyone, in this demo we are going to see what are various login controls. So to learn login controls, let us go through a case study or a scenario. Say I want to develop an application for an organization and the application stores the information about employees and department. And this application is being accessed by two kinds of users. Say one is an administrator who has all the rights and another is operator who has the limited rights. So I am going to develop an application for organization. So here I have two kinds of users. One is admin. So I can have n number of admins. So for example, Jack and Peter are admins here. And another kind of user is operator. So in the same way, I can have n number of operators. But admin will have different kind of access or different rights, whereas operator will have different rights. Now, admin and operator, they have these rights. See, admin can perform CURD operations on department. Now CURD stands for create, update, read, delete. C stands for create, U update, R read, D delete. That means admin can perform all the operations on department. So all these operations will be implemented on department.aspx page. So the name of the page is CURD underscore department dot ASPX. In the same way, I have one more page called as CURD underscore employee EMP. That means admin can create, update, read, delete any employee. Now, admin will have their own home pages and a common master page for all these things. So any file or any page which has got access to admin is stored under admin folder. Now in the same way, operator has different rights. So I have different folder for operator where operator can read department and read employee. That's it. Operator will not have any rights of creating, updating and deleting. Operator can only read. Now my web application will have these two folders. One folder is for admin and another folder is for operator. Now whenever admin logs in or operator logs in, they'll be having a common login window, login.aspx. So whether it is Jack, Peter, Lily or Mark, whoever it may be, if they log in, we are going to read their username and password and check the genuinity of the user. So checking the genuinity of the user is nothing but authentication. I want to check whether the logged in user is an authentic user or not. Now this is the second question that whether the logged in user is an admin or operator. But first of all, is he or she is an authentic user so to check that I need to perform authentication so normally I perform authentication on the login page with the help of username and password so whether it is a Jack Peter Lily or Mark whoever it may be they need to log in through a common window that is nothing but login window now once the user is authentic we are going to send them to a page called as redirecting page where I'll be checking the role or the authorization saying that if the logged in user is authentic then check the role whether the user is an admin or an operator. If user does not have any role that means the logged in user is neither admin nor operator. So we are going to have even that scenario that we are going to see in future. So logged in user will not have any kind of role. So we call these as roles. Admin is one role and operator is another role. 
so if a user does not have any role we are going to display a message on the same redirecting page saying that role has not been assigned yet so this page is called as authorization page so we are checking the logged in user if the logged in user is admin we are going to send them to the home page of admin if the logged in user is operator we are going to send them to the home page of operator so in my project i am going to have a login page where i am going to check the genuinity of the user that means where i'll be performing authentication and i'll have one more page called as redirecting page where i'll be performing authorization and depending upon the role i am going to send them to the home page of admin folder or home page of operator folder and we have many other things which are in common to any kind of user like change password like new registrations and password recovery if a user forget the password then password need to be recovered all these things are common so any common feature or any common functionality or any common page i am going to put it in a common folder so here i have three features which are in common to any user so new user sign up if any user wants to sign up they can directly sign up they can directly come to the common folder if any user needs to recover their password they can directly come to this common folder if any user wants to change their password they need to log in and they can come to this common folder whether it is an admin or operator they can access the same change password so common folder can be accessed directly from the login page if you observe any websites you will have new sign up below the login window or forget password link so if you click that it will be redirecting to this so if we see this now my project has got three folders admin folder operator folder and common folder and in admin folder i have four files and in operator folder i have four files and in common folder i have three files and i have two more files which are out of all these folders that is login and redirecting pages or files so this is my project architecture or my directory structure i call it as directory structure or i can say my ui user interface or my prototype so the best term would be directory structure so my directory structure is something like this i have admin folder i have operator folder i have common folder with the following files and i have two pages or files outside all these folders that is nothing but login and redirecting so i am going to create this directory structure first and after creating the directory structure i need to perform few steps to start using login control so what are those steps let us see first you need to set authentication type we need to set authentication type now there are two types of authentications that we have the first is windows authentication and the second is web authentication or form authentication so whenever i log in to my system my operating system i use some username and password so if i am using the same username and password for my web application then i say that the my web application is windows authenticated web application but normally we do not do that if we observe gmail yahoo mail any web application they have a separate form where they ask separate user name and password they have separate form where they ask separate user name and password so a separate form with separate user name and password is called as form authentication so my project will be by default set to windows authentication and i need to change it to form authentication that is my first step and the second step is i need to enable roles just now we have seen there are two roles admin and operator so the roles feature is by default disabled in our application i need to enable the roles first 
and the next step is I need to create the roles so after enabling the roles I need to create the roles. so I'll be creating roles admin and operator and as many roles I have next I need to create few users so that I should start testing my application so I'll be creating the users next I need to assign roles to the users or a role to the user that means if I create a user say Jack I need to assign the role whether Jack is an admin or operator and finally I need to set access rules now access rules for example I have admin folder admin folder should be accessed only by admins not by any other users and operator folder it should be accessed only by operators not by other users so to do all these things to perform all these steps where should I do these steps so where should I perform these steps do all these things using ASP.NET web configuration tool so your visual web developer provides a tool called as ASP.NET web configuration tool where we are going to perform all these six steps so the first step is set authentication type second is enabling roles third creating roles fourth creating users fifth assigning roles to the users and sixth setting the access rules so I need to perform all these steps after creating the directory structure so what is that I have done I have already created the directory structure creating directory structure is nothing but creating the folders and adding files to the folders files are nothing but your pages so I have created the directory structure and let us see the directory structure that I have created 